Let's start our discussion from the general question. Uh, I mean, from, from the, um, let's say, bird's view. Uh, and the question is, how do you envision the role of local government in driving um, digital transformation within cities? I mean, what strategies do you believe are the most effective in fostering collaboration between private and public sectors? Well, look, first of all, I think um, public-private partnerships are absolutely essential in, in this space. We at MasterCard have a team that does nothing other than work with governments and cities all over the world. And there's really five areas that, 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 we, uh, that we can help in, but obviously there's lots of other companies that can help in lots of other areas. But principally in the areas of transit, in tourism and travel-related data, in cyber resilience, in commerce in general, in financial inclusion... There's a whole array of areas where we work, and we have worked. I know that, that Poland's now been a member of the EU for 20 years, and we've been here for 20 years working alongside uh, not just the Polish government, but with a very close partnership with the mayor uh, of Poznan here. Um, so in, in a great number of areas, but uh, I think those five are the, are the key ones for us. And which is the most important? Which, which well, I, I would say transit is probably the most visible. Um, we... Um, it, it, in Poznan, you can tap in and tap out using an open loop uh, credit or debit card, which is fantastic. You can't in every city in Poland, but in most cities in Poland, you can. Um, it's a really hard thing to do. You know, Paris hasn't cracked this yet, but Poznan has. So that's uh, terrific. Um, and we think it's also very important, not just for tourism, but for business travel as well. There'll be a lot of people coming to Poznan who need to use the public transit system who have easy access to it. In fact, in the Netherlands, we've just launched a countrywide, not just a citywide, but a countrywide tap in, tap out. You can tap in in Amsterdam, tap out in Rotterdam, and all the tickets will be calculated in the background for you. That's really great. Similar for... solution is in Norway, I guess. Yeah, no, no, Norway has something similar, but Norway is city by city. This is countrywide, which is even, even, even more complicated. Yeah. Um, that, that's one area. I think one, one, one other area that I think is really important is, um, uh, is, is travel and tourism data because we do have data. We make sure it's very much anonymized, aggregated, and so on, but uh, we can identify where people are traveling from, where people are traveling to, what and how much they spend, not individuals, just the patterns, uh, and that can be very useful uh, in terms of helping drive the business agenda for events like this. We could even measure the impact of an event like impact on the local economy. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit later about measuring uh, this, this impact. Okay, Mr. President, what's your uh, perspective? Uh, yeah, no, it is the access to the important data. For example, uh, uh, we treat this uh, investment uh, supporting impact as investment. It means uh, we uh, receive the, some data. How much do you spend in our restaurants? hotels and uh, you know uh, it is for me uh, very important to know uh, how much money it is uh, really in impact and uh, how much Poznan has from impact uh, and it is not only mastercard because it is it is really if we uh, organize anything we can have access uh, the influence and uh, we can explain to the citizens uh, it was okay from our side, for example, uh, to give uh, for some events some money. Uh, and uh, if you see the, the, the uh, opportunities we have with play, for example, we could receive uh, the exact number of people uh, uh, which, for example, uh, stay in Poznan. It means we know how many citizens we, do we have really uh, it is 100,000 uh, more than uh, in statistics. Uh, and uh, during the day, it is uh, even... 100,000 more. 100, yeah, the city is... Uh, six, six. It is 640, in fact. Okay. But uh, during the day, it is additional 150,000. Uh, and then we know how many cars uh, do we receive from directions... Uh, we can also measure all the data, how many people are coming by tram, by buses, by special lines. It is really the access to the, to the very important data. Okay, but let's back to the beginning, because I would like to make it clear. 
Mr. Barnard, how it, how, how it has begun, I think, you define five areas you collaborate. Yeah? Who defined the problem? Uh, who knocked the door <laughs> to private sector or to public sector? Well, I think it's a bit of both, but I mean, obviously, we, uh, I said we have a team that does nothing other than work with, with the governments around the world. And, you know, we, we do lobbying, we have a public policy team, but it's much, much more effective for us as a company to be helping cities, uh, to help governments solve their citizens' problems or the problems of their small businesses or, or large businesses, for that matter. Now, we start, because we're MasterCard, with payments, but then the data that flows with the payment is obviously very rich and uh, insightful, so that, that is the next step of the journey. In fact, the um, 12 metropolitan uh, cities of Poland have just signed up to uh, receive a whole set of data insights that we, we provide, and Poznan in particular has signed up to be a member of our along with the United Nations Tourism Agency, uh, but signed up to be a member of our Tourism Innovation Hub. It's a global, a global tourism innovation hub based in, in Madrid, and Poznan is now part of that. And it, again, it's not necessarily for leisure tourism. It's because you have a huge conference facility here, and you need to be able to measure the impact of it to be able to um, pass that benefit on to, to the citizens of the, of the city. Mm -hmm. Could you give me an example, uh, the latest initiative uh, with, with the uh, city of Poznan? Well, the, the, the latest one I've, I've just told you about was the Tourism, ah, tourism okay. Innovation Hub. But look, I, I think for the last 20 years, we, we've had something running in Poland for the last 10 years or so called Go Cashless, which um, 20 years ago, Poland was way behind the European average in terms of acceptance locations now for electronic goods. Now you're way ahead. Um, it's been a, a fantastic transformation. In most cities, tap in, tap out is the go-to way, is the best practice way of accessing your, your public transit system. Um, and now we have uh, this data sharing agreement with, with Poznan as well. So in many ways, there's one final one, which is something we, we're just launching, we're announcing it today, called Go Digital. And it, it's a challenge that we've recognized amongst female-led small and micro businesses in Poland. We've launched it successfully in uh, Czechia. We, uh, we did something for Ukrainian businesswomen who were displaced, but we're just launching something. It's a philanthropic exercise, but again, it's, it's about how to use um, a, what, what we call a one-stop shop, how these businesses can get access to coaching, to mentoring, to, um, uh, and to digital platforms to be able to drive their businesses better. Okay, thanks. Mr. President, we are talking about the collaboration between private sector, the company like MasterCard. What's, what's the biggest challenge? Legislation, technology? Yeah, uh, we have completely new situation after the uh, election uh, in October. The <laughs> uh, why? Because, you know, uh, it is uh, also important to have some trust. If you uh, make exactly. such uh, um, uh, partnership, if you are looking for some solution, uh, you never know what happens. And if you uh, lose some uh, public money, then it is quite dangerous for uh, people from the public sector. And uh, if we have the state which is not, you know, hunting uh, an uh, opposition politician, then it is uh, much, much easier. And uh, it is really uh, a lot of opportunities. There are a lot of opportunities in such uh, cooperation. We have very good experiences. We have such a special uh, installation for waste. Uh, the wharf, 10 years ago, 1 billion slot. Uh, it is the biggest uh, public-private sector investment uh, already done in, in, in Poland. And so the opportunities are because then they have know-how. The private sector has uh, know-how and we don't. Uh, if we uh, find a way how to cooperate, it could be very good for our citizens. Okay, let's talk about the citizens. Let's talk about the residents. Uh, how many residents live in Poznan right now? Half a million. 
440,000 okay. official, but uh, additional 100,000. Uh, during the day, additional 150,000. And it is the same situation in every uh, big city. In Wrocław, the same, Gdańsk, uh, it means we have much more citizens than uh, statistically. And the question for both panelists is, uh, um, how do you ensure equitable access to uh, you know, digital services and inf infrastructure? How, sorry, how do we ensure? How do you, how, how do you ensure equitable access to, yeah. to digital services? Look, I, I, because we've got 400,000 people here. Yes. Well, look, 400,000 people have access to something that we think is rather marvelous, which is digital payments. Um, as you know, you can pay, as you said earlier, using your, yeah. your phone. You can, uh, uh, digital payments are extremely safe, extremely convenient for citizens. And increasingly, the world is going online and becoming digital. E-commerce wouldn't exist without uh, digital payments. And I think anybody who has access to a phone has access equitably to our payment services. So I, I think, um, you, you know, even cash, everybody has access to cash. But cash, we've proven up study after study, is more expensive and less... There should be cash in an economy. Some people want to use cash. They should be able to use cash, absolutely. But it's just so much safer and so much more convenient to be able to pay electronically, both in a physical environment and an online environment. And we make that incredibly efficient by bringing global scale to it rather than it being something very local and therefore a little bit more expensive. Mr. President? No, uh, it is very important because, you know, we are having money from taxes. Uh, and then uh, such payments, electronic payments, uh, then uh, we have uh, taxes. Uh, if you have cash, uh, you never know. Uh, the black market is uh, also the big problem for the cities, not only for the states. Uh, cashless, okay, I love this. Uh, but I live uh, in the south of Poland, in mountain, and people in the you know, deep province, <laughs> don't like cashless politics, uh, uh, because it's safe for them to pay cash. Yeah. And could you, how, how could you describe, how do you explain that your technology service, the digital service is safe, and how you care about the safety? Well, look, it's extremely safe because we have something called um, chargebacks and disputes. So if, so if you buy something using an electronic, using a card or using your, your phone and something goes wrong with that good, you'll get your money back. Um, whereas if you buy it using cash, you won't. If you drop your wallet on the floor uh, and it's got some Zloty in it, then it may be gone. Uh, if you drop your card zero liability, you're, you're super secure. So I think there is an education process. But as I said before, if people want to use cash, they should be able to use cash. Uh, I don't think we should Shouldn't try... be forbidden. Sorry? Shouldn't be forbidden. Shouldn't be forbidden, absolutely not. But if people don't want to accept cash as a business because it's too expensive for them, because they have to, they have to store, store it securely, they have to take it to the bank every night, they have to have safety deposit boxes and so on... Um, if they don't want to accept it, I don't think they should be forced to accept it either. So it, it kind of works both ways. But what we're seeing is consumers, people, citizens are voting with their feet or voting with their cards, yeah. as it were, because um, you know the, the amount of cash now in you know across across Europe is uh, is is you know gradually diminishing. And in certain parts of Europe, if you go to the Nordics, even the UK, there's hardly any cash. But At all. It's important what you mentioned, uh, that, that uh, cash shouldn't be forbidden. Uh, what about the digital currency in the near future? Yeah, look, uh, we welcome competition of all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, you know, I don't think there's... Uh, a digital currency out there at the moment which is very fit for purpose when it comes to payments. Um, if you think of things like, well, the most famous one obviously is Bitcoin, um, it fluctuates in value so much it's not particularly good for, for payments and actually the use case isn't very good. I think something a, a little bit further down the line, which is a central bank digital currency or a digital euro, could be a very interesting development. But equally, 
that could run across our network on our rails. So we're open to all sorts of uh, competition and cooperation. We, we've always had a partnership model with government. Back to cyber security, Mr. President. Uh, has Poznan experienced any cyber uh, attack recently or something like that? Uh, yeah, it, it, it is very important because uh, cyber attacks, it is not the, the critical infrastructure. It is not only the city council and uh, such things. It is also uh, very dangerous for democracy. If you have uh, such uh, portals uh, in internet and they delivered uh, fake news, uh, it is uh, first panic. Uh, we uh, had some bad experiences uh, in this area. And I just was discussing this area with Vice Premier uh, Minister from our government, uh, with Kavkowski, what to do, because uh, if such portals are taken by Putin, then it is dangerous for democracy. It means not only the critical infrastructure, not only uh, such things like banks and so, it is also very important uh, to um, explain all the aspects uh, because then the traditional media are taking such news and they treat it like like source of uh, information. So uh, it is the cyber uh, security. It's very very important for the cities, for the state, and for the all citizens. If, if I can just build on that, we in two weeks' time we're opening in Brussels, which is our European headquarters, where I'm based, um, a European Cyber Resilience Centre, and it's. We collaborate with governments across Europe, with uh, security agencies, with Interpol, with NATO, um, and various other organizations in uh, working together. Cyber is a, is, a, is a joint enterprise between public, com public companies like ours and public sector organizations. And we, we do, we don't in, in the case of Poznan, but we, we do provide um, certain services to governments and cities for example, we have a product called Risk Recon, which could look at the, uh, the visible footprint of um, the city's website and assess it for um, weaknesses in terms of its, uh, its, its cyber resilience. Uh, we provide that to a lot of organizations. That's just one example of many things we do in, in the cyberspace. And you know, working with government to keep the, uh, the payment system of the country running and cyber resilient, I think, is one of the most important priorities we have in the world right now. Thank you. Uh, time is uh, almost end. Uh, thank you for an interesting uh, interview. Uh, and I keep my finger crossed for your collaboration <laughs> in the near future. Now, just say one thing. I came here for the first time last year. I thought it was a tremendous event. I had no idea of the size. But I went to the city centre to meet with um, the mayor, and it was a building site. And now I'm going back uh, <laughs> later this afternoon because I'm told it's all finished and it's all looking beautiful. So many congratulations. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you, and thank you very much for cooperation. Thank you also for, 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 for being here and impact, because it is a very important to discuss such uh, important issues. It is uh, having such uh, people like Ivan Krastev, like you know, Michelle Obama. Uh, it is also very important for our, for our democracy. Uh, for the development of the city, and it is the best promotion for the city. And uh, I see, I received such such data, how much money you are uh, spending here in our beautiful restaurants, hotels, and so on. It is, <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. That we do the business. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day.